All right, welcome back, dear viewers. Uh, Going to spend some time talking about these two games again. Uh, uh, finding the comparing and contrasting is actually uh, highlighting certain issues and, and things to think about when it comes to your games and gaming in general. Today we're going to talk about how uh, Lamentations of the Flame Princess and Shadow Dark treat magic and why I think it's superior. Um, but before we get into that, uh, this is what I do. I play games. I record myself playing games, and then I talk about them. Um, I got nothing against the flip-through review, but uh, I find uh, they don't give you much information. And uh, you know, this ho hobby's kind of expensive, and I just want to make sure you are putting your money where it should go. At least, at least, give making allowing you to make informed decisions, right? So, let's talk about how. Uh, what these two games get right about magic okay um i i think magic is um well i i think i want i don't want to overstate it but i just don't think wizards of the coast has taken it as seriously as it should be taken and i think that's one of the reasons why some of the design choice choices it's made um are what they are and um and i think the game has kind of suffered so um to me, magic is scary, and because it's not ordinary, it is the fantastical. It is wondrous. It's scary. It's powerful. It's mind-bending, reality-shifting power. Um, if the rules of the game are the rules of the game world, then magic should be breaking those rules. Uh, normal folks in the game uh, game world should fear the magic user. This uh, wonderful little. Lamentations of the Flame Princess image. Um, I don't know what spell that is, but uh, she's cutting open the world, and its guts are coming out. Okay, um, you might not necessarily need to go that far, but um, magic users should be able to do things that no one else can do. Um, and that's 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 what makes magic magic. There's no explanation for it other than it's just the manipulation of raw power, right? Um, and I think Shadow Dark and Lamentations of the Flame Princess get this right. Um, it logically follows that if magic is a reality bending power, then wielding this power should be dangerous because it's just you're just a mere mortal. How how can you do this? You have this forbidden knowledge, yes, but uh, there's only so much you can do with it. And um, both Shadow Dark and Lamentations of the Flame Princess, their magic systems are premised on this idea. Um, I'm mentioning Dungeon Crawl Classic here um, because they have mishap tables too. Uh, in fact, they may have been some of the first to really do it um, in recent years, um, notwithstanding whatever was coming out of Judges Guild all those years ago. Um, I'm just not going to talk about DCC because I just don't know the system well enough. I've played the game a couple of times. I like it. I want to play more, but I don't feel comfortable really talking about DCC. Um, and I don't want to lead you astray. There's too many people, too many talking heads that do that already. Um, you know, they don't read the rules, but then they have opinions. I don't get it. But anyway, um, so Magic and Shadow Dark. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. The Magic user declares the spell they are casting. They roll a d20, add their intelligence modifier versus a target number of 10 plus the spell's tier. That's the spell level. Okay, so it's level one. The target number is 11. If it's a tier 5, it's 15. You get the idea. On a success, the spell goes off. On a failure, the magic user cannot cast the spell again until a full rest. Um, on a critical failure, uh, a roll of 1 on a d20, there is a mishap. And then you roll on the appropriate mishap table. And there's three tables. One for tiers 1 and 2. A table for tiers 3 and 4. And then it table for tier five and obviously the more powerful the spell the greater the mishap and the more dangerous the mishap okay now magic in lamentations of the flame princess i've kind of talked about this in other videos i encourage you to go check those out but um kind of condensed here is the core book has a vancian magic system which is classic D. &D. You memorize the spell and then you cast it. And there's only so many you can memorize in a given day. Um, what people need to understand, though, it's not 
you need to read Dying Earth, uh, Vance's Dying Earth, to really understand what Vancean is. And I, the more I think about it, the more I like it. You're not just memorizing something. You're imprinting it upon your soul, your very being, and then you're unleashing it out in the world. So it's like this very powerful thing that's happening to you, uh, your character, right? Um, and in Lamentations, you know, it's it's borrowing from classic BX Vancey and magic, but the spells in Lamentations are much more powerful. Um, they're not like charm. There's no real limitation to charm, for example. You can charm as many people as you want, and they will be charmed until you have them do something that's against their character, in which case they might be able to break the spell. Um, whereas I think standard BX... Depending on the creature's intelligence, it might be able to make another save every day, every week, every month, something like that. Okay, um, And I contend, and I've made this argument before in other videos, Summon, Lamentations of the Flame Princess, Summon spell is the most powerful spell in the entirety of the OSR. It's more powerful than Wish. Because Wish you can't end a campaign with. You might do something pretty crazy with Wish, but Summon... A uh, player could try to summon a creature, lose control, and then the campaign ends. Um, yeah. So, anyway. I maintain that is the most powerful spell. Um, and I have an entire video on it. So you should go check that one out. Um, but yeah, that's, that's Lamentations Basics. But the product line has a bunch of stuff that you can get that will enhance your character's abilities as a magic user like there's a book called six by six by six and it's a book entirely dedicated to magic missile and different ways you can use that spell um, and make it more powerful or just different from before um, and then there are these two they're free you can get these free at the website the pdfs uh, lotfp.com eldritch cock and vaginas are magic it's kind of tongue-in-cheek uh, but these have spontaneous casting rules that um, I think are fantastic. And it's got unique spells in those books that I just think are fantastic. Um, it's a little bit more involved than what you get in Shadow Dark. Um, basically, you can cast a number of spells equal to the number of slots you have depending on your level. So level one, you get one. Level two, you get two. So on and so forth. Uh, but, uh, and you'll have no problem casting spells, but once you go beyond that or some of these other conditions are present, you run the risk of a mishap. And that requires you to make a save versus sp magic with a cumulative minus one um, to the roll per condition present. So you're going beyond your spell allotment. You're casting an unprepared spell. You're casting directly for someone else's spell book. Um, you're casting while uh, you're more than lightly encumbered. Um, in Lamentations, magic users can wear plate mail. Okay, it's possible, right? And wield pistols and stuff. Um, yeah, you're casting in the same round, you take damage. You know, all that can be cumulative. So if you're wearing a plate mail, uh, you take damage, you're reading for someone else's uh, spell book, uh, it's an unprepared spell, and it's beyond, you're at a minus five, right? And if you fail that save, there's a mishap. And then you roll a d12, similar to what Shadow Dark has. But what the difference here is every spell has the first six on the d12 are unique to the spell the remaining six is like a basic chart so you'd have to actually reference the spell book or uh, the spell uh, to determine what the mishap is okay and here's an example you probably can't quite read read it so i'll just read some of it for you but uh this is a spell from eldritch cock it's called an autumn to cripple children um I absolutely love this spell. It got used in a one uh, a mini campaign that's on my channel. It's the um, uh, 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 Scenic Dunsmith, Heresy at Dunsmith game. Uh, pretty much ended the game. <laughs> the spell pretty much just ended the game. Uh, but it was pretty wild. Um, so basically, well, aside from what the spell can do, it summons these like ghostly creatures, the, these, the crippled children, and caught, wreaks havoc in like... A multi-mile radius around you uh, but if you miscast there's this table the first six as you can see here are unique to um, 
unique to this spell. So if you rolled a one, for example, the spell instead summons winter around the crippled children, which intensifies bad luck to the same degree that the autumn caused the crippled children to intensify good luck. The weather becomes extremely frigid. So there's this now new spell effect. You've just brought winter to wherever you were casting the spell, for example, right? So, um, and just as a quick side note, the uh, spells in both these books are derived from uh, heavy metal, black metal song titles. So it, it's a really awesome way to come up with new spells. Something to think about. Um, so let's compare it to WotC, what these two games do that Watsi doesn't do. So Watsi's spell casting mechanics feel and play too much like they are focused on the mechanics and grid combat and less on the fluff or the lore or any background game material. What I really like about like OSR spells is like you get like kind of like these you know block paragraphs of like what the spell is and what it does but that kind of can feed your imagination as a magic using player and if you get creative with the spells you might be able to do some pretty wild stuff um not so with like the very rigid mechanical spells that you get from wizards of the coast and now to be fair shadow dark does this too um but in my opinion it's saved by virtue of the fact that you have these mishap tables that make the spellcaster dangerous and that's uh, that's something i really like um i think you know as i stated I think the the magic user should be scary. Um, I should probably should have flipped these two around so you can actually see the paragraph. But I think the way you treat magic in your campaigns is critical uh, for tone and immersion. Watsi has made magic so ubiquitous that magic has lost its flavor, uniqueness, and what makes it special. Um, in with in five e and probably six e, from what I'm seeing. You know, you could have your fighters all of a sudden a magic using f fighter of some kind at third level. Um, everybody seems to have spells. Even like I think even I saw some barbarian builds that that can do that. Um, makes no sense to me. Um, it makes magic mundane. Makes magic uh, kind of bland, and um, and you're just running around with like superheroes, which. I mean, I have to ask the question, can can peasants, you know, can you get a couple levels in peasant and then that guy can start casting magic too? Like, I just don't, I just don't like it. Uh, it, it, it loses all uniqueness and, um, and, and, well, what makes it magic? Magic is supposed to be this thing that is not properly understood, but is like changing the very fabric of reality of the game world. And why does all the characters why 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 are all characters able to do that i don't know but um so as i've been kind of mentioning with shadow dark and more so with lamentations the magic user is a scary character to have in the party a mishap could really cause some serious problems um indeed the magic user in lamentations could end the campaign um, I, I, again, I mentioned summon. There's some other spells out there that can really screw things up for you. Um, you that might not be your thing, and that's fine. Okay, that that's fine. But I find that awesome. Like I want the the magic using character or player in my party to like be someone that I, the game master, have to worry about. Like, what is this guy gonna do? Um. So having um magic be scary unique dangerous i think really adds something special to your campaign that you're not getting with wizards of the coast you're not getting with uh these high fantasy super hero type games um certainly if that is something that you're looking for in the campaign that you're putting together then by all means use that but it's going to come at a cost magic's going to be kind of bland whereas the, sh the sword and sorcery of shadow dark or the weird horror of lamentations magic is like something to f be f be afraid of um and i just think it makes for a great campaign so and a great game whether it's a one shot or a campaign so but that's all i have this afternoon folks thanks for watching please hit like subscribe bell icon yada 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 and i will see you later take it easy